One of the most discussed topics in the Blue Lock community right now is what happened in the wild card and how did it turn Kunigami from this to this? As of this recording, we're currently on chapter 213, and we've only had subtle hints as to what actually happened in the wild card and the contents of it. So I thought I'd give my opinion on what I think happened in the wild card and another theory of how Kira Ryusuke might be tied into it as well. Keep in mind, this is all a theory. Again, nothing has been really confirmed, but we're just trying to piece the puzzles together. I don't really think I gotta give a manga spoiler warning at this point because, you know. Um, but I guess manga spoilers. So without any more further delays, let's get straight into the first theory. Team Z versus Kunigami. This is the first theory, my personal theory, and a lot of other people's theories as well. So like it sounds, after losing the Shido in the second selection, we know Kunigami enters the wild card, but we don't really get any information on what happened to the other members of Team Z. Broke Naruhaya, Fodder Imamura, Goalie Yemon, and Trader Kuon are all members of the original Team Z who didn't pass the second selection. It makes sense why they didn't pass the second selection, I mean they weren't really that good, but they all did have the determination to live in blue lock, so I don't really see a reason why they wouldn't enter the wild card. This theory is also based on the fact that only the second selection people are able to play in the wild card and no one from the pre-test or the first selection, so most of the people in the wild card would end up being fodder like the teammates of Team V for example. Now, what I think happens after the second selection ends is that we have a little reunion with everyone who lost in Team Z in the wild card. As for the reasoning for the wild card, we only know that different philosophies were forced onto contestants and that it was used to create someone with the same physique as Noel Noah. It's also important to know if Ego told them this at the beginning or at the end, but Ego usually doesn't tell them the reasoning of why he does something until they clear it, just like the game of tag. So let's assume that Ego didn't tell them the reasoning, just playing the game and not knowing when it's going to end and they just have to complete it. I think it's super smart on his part, he's pretty much replicating the situation Noel Noah was in for all the wildcard candidates, being in a situation where you only focus on football and the things that help you play in football. I assume that everyone's going to be really motivated to win, but with Team Z specifically, they're all going to try and work together to pass together since 1. They have history together, and 2. They'll assume it's like the first selection where they could have prioritized the goals in themselves but choose to go with team play instead. Team Z is already pretty close because they went through hell and back together in the first selection, so they're obviously going to try and aim to eliminate people that aren't Team Z. It's kind of like if you're playing tag with your friends, you want to avoid your friends and tag the random people. I think Team Z is all going to be in agreement except for one person, and of course, that's Kunigami. After losing to Shido, I think he's going to question himself and his mentality, wanting to break himself down and realize that he has to betray his friends if he wants to be the lone wolf egoist that stands on top. I don't think he'll say this out loud, he'll keep it hidden from the rest of Team Z until they figure it out, kind of like Kuon. And that brings me to Kuon as well. I think he's going to play a super important role in this arc and being the first person to be betrayed. It's a pretty typical trope we see in anime, you know, traitor becomes betrayed, but it would make Kuon's character go full circle, you know, being brought back to the team by Kunigami and then being betrayed by him in the wild card. There's also a lot of symbolism slash foreshadowing behind Kuon and Kunigami in my opinion that I think a lot of people oversee. Kunigami being the hero he is, is the first one to call him out saying he will beat him fairly, and then is the only person to personally go up to Kuon and tell him to join in on them celebrating. In fact, literally reaching out his hand to him with the whole frame of their handshake. Now it's starting to make sense, right? They would never expect Kunigami, the person who fights fair, is all about justice and wants to be the hero of football to betray his friends, but I think that's exactly what he'll do to ensure his own survival. This then sparks the emo rogue Kunigami we see in the recent chapters as, you know, he can't be a hero he always dreamt of being, thus the personality change. Another thing is that once he finally reaches the tipping point of betraying his friends to ensure his own survival, I think that would affect him mentally like crazy and is why we see him push everyone away and only working by himself. On top of that, you have Ego forcing different philosophies, probably the same one Kunigami is thinking, like prioritizing your survival and only caring about yourself, and constantly nailing it into him all throughout the wild card. As for the actual content of the wild card, my personal opinion was that it was different physical challenges to see and also build a physique like Noel and Noah, something like the show Physical 100. If you don't know what Physical 100 is, I'll give a brief explanation. It's a Korean show bringing 100 of the best physiques amongst Korea from bodybuilders, actors, Olympic gold medalists, powerlifters, even the world's strongest Korean to find out who has the best overall physique. You could be the strongest man in the world, but if you don't do well in stamina challenges, you could lose, so that's why I narrowed it down to who had the best overall physique in Korea. Instead of Physical 100, in this case, it would prove who had the closest physique to Noel Noah. Maybe it was training to see who had the most accuracy with both legs or literally physical challenges like those in Physical 100 where you had to push rocks over 100 kilos and the person who last stops wins. 
If this is the case, this makes a lot of sense as to why Kunigami's physicality has gone up, is able to shoot with his right, and also doesn't call himself a hero anymore. I think if they execute something along the lines of my theory, reading that is genuinely going to be so beautiful. Like, imagine something where it's just Kuan and Kunigami, they can both survive, but Kunigami ends up betraying Kuan. God, dude, that would be so peak. I... I I can't wait for them to cook something up. And the thing is that I assume Kunigami would get emotional or something, feeling bad. And then you have the egoist mentality that is constantly being nailed into him, where only one can survive and you can't waste time feeling bad, you know? I think what happens next is that the rest of Team Z sees this, questions Kunigami, basically guilt tripping him, you know? And obviously he feels bad. Again, I want to emphasize how much of a toll that must be mentally on him, but he still has to ensure his own survival. It's literally the most blue lock thing there is, to be honest. It's even more blue lock than the current blue lock, if you get what I'm saying. I mean, it's literally one person surviving and turning him into an egoist who only cares about himself. I think this is the option as to what is most likely going to happen in the wild card. I don't think the author is going to write out Team Z off screen, so if you can utilize them, now would be a perfect time. Now, why I think this theory is pretty valid is that one, it hits the point for creating a vessel like Noel Noah with the physical training game, and two, the different philosophies that Kunigami had to undergo from eliminating his friends. However, there are some flaws, and the one I see are that the challenge may end up being something completely different, or they tell him from the start. And also in the most recent chapter, 213, it said that Kunigami was forced to become two-footed to survive in the wild card. However, as well, these points are all dependent on the challenges. I think the main point is that Kunigami will eliminate Team Z, and I really hope to see that come true because, dude, that would be so peak. That would literally be peak writing. All right, the next theory is one of my personal theories. Honestly speaking, I don't really see it happening, but it's pretty cool, and it would be a lot of fan service as well. That is the return of Kira Ryusuke in the wild card. If you don't remember Kira, he was the first player we see get eliminated in blue lock. He's also known as the Jewel Edge Pan, and Isagi's first victim. He's a white-haired character, and we all know how much plot armor white-haired characters get, so his return might come in the form of Blue Lock's wild card. Well, at least in a flashback, because he probably got victimized by Kunigami as well. This is a little bit different take on the wild card. Instead of physical challenge, it lines more with creating a perfect vessel, and that is a training challenge. In fact, a training challenge to see who wants it the most. A continuous, non-stopping challenge that takes both mentality and physicality to win, and doesn't stop until there's one person left. There are a lot of theories saying that Kira is going to return on the U20 for another other team, but let's just take this theory as where he's in the wild card instead. After getting eliminated, Kira wants to continue in blue lock, you know, prove Ego wrong, so he walks through the wild card path and is introduced to the other players that failed the pretest. I think this is where the training challenge begins, a non-stop grueling challenge which is pretty much training to failure in order to create a vessel like Noel Noah, and there can only be one remaining. Since Kira failed the pretest, he pretty much needs to keep it up every single day and also wait until the first selection and the second selection are done and everyone is eliminated from that for even a chance to win. That way, it gives an advantage for the people who last longer. Even if he wins amongst the other 25 in the pretest, he still needs to keep going every single day and then eliminate the people who got eliminated in the first selection, if that makes sense. That way, it gives him both a disadvantage and an advantage. Like I said before, he's probably exhausted from all that training, but his body is physically stronger and better than those who haven't been in the wild card as long as he was. And on top of that, Ego said he was forcing different philosophies on them, so I wouldn't be surprised if nice guy Kira turned into a dark, egoistic Kira, kind of like Kunigami before he went into the wild card and then after. He probably got mentally tortured as well, forced into the blue lock mentality of beating others to survive, especially after the game of tag when he got rolled by Isagi, a person he thought was his friend. And then now comes the second selection where all the eliminated players joined the wild card, including Kuan, Naruhaya, Yemon, Imamura, and of course Kunigami. They then meet up with Kira, who at this point isn't a nice guy anymore, and they're probably wondering what the hell happened to him to be like that. I still see Team Z wanting to work together, but Kunigami this time doesn't have any plans betraying them, instead still having that hero mentality. You might be seeing where I'm going with this, but at this point, Kira is no match for any of the fodder eliminated characters, except for Kunigami, who already had a good physique. Kunigami being a hero wants all his friends to pass and rejoin the others who did pass the second selection, but instead the rest of Team Z gets eliminated by Kira. I don't really know the logistics of it, but maybe Kira got into their heads mentally, which is a really huge factor, but Kunigami is pretty much able to keep up with Kira and his new physicality due to him already having a good physique. I think this is the point where all the character development happens for Kunigami where he realized he hasn't saved anyone yet. It breaks his hero mentality and realizes that in order to beat Kira, he needs to leave the hero mentality 
and adopt the egoist mentality. This would explain why Kunigami left the hero mentality and also became like this dark rogue person we see in the recent chapters. I think it then comes to a mental consensus where they are both super strong, but after a long time, Kunigami comes out on top since Kira can't keep going anymore, or maybe Kunigami got into his head, and then we're at the point where Kunigami is revealed as the winner of the wild card. I know the series is pretty wild and far out there, I know, but it's good to spice things up, you know? On top of that, it does line up with Ego forcing different philosophies in them, and we see that in both Kunigami and Kira. And then the physicality part to build a vessel like Noel Noah would be that training challenge to push yourself past your limit and have a physique like his. Some of the flaws of this theory, though, are that, again, in the most recent chapter, it says that Kunigami was forced to become two-footed in the wild card, so maybe it was a time-based thing to see who can get the closest physique, but then we don't really know how his mentality would have changed. Another thing is that it probably makes a lot more sense if only the people from second selection actually had a chance to play in the wild card, but whatever, this is just a fun theory. So those are my two theories about what I think happened in the blue lock wild card. Again, as of chapter 213, we only know that the wild card's purpose was to create someone with the same physique as Noel Noah and was forced different philosophies upon them. Personally, I think that Team Z theory is something that might actually happen. I'm really excited to see if it is because if it does happen, that would genuinely be peak writing. On top of that, I think we'll be getting Kunigami's story with the wild card when we have the game against PXG when he finally meets Shido again, so we got a long time till then, unless they decide to develop Kunigami in this current match against the Ubers. Kunigami is actually a really interesting character. I think his whole hero trope will come back, maybe in a form of like an anti-hero or something like that, but there's been glimpses of old Kunigami in the current ones, so I really can't wait until his character develops. That being said, my name's Hario. Thank you so much for watching. This is the second video on this channel, so I'd appreciate if you guys would hit that sub button. It doesn't cost anything, and I'll be cooking up some really good content really soon. Comment down your theory on what you think happened in the wild card, but until until then, I'll see you guys in the next one.